For a snooker player, the cue is often described as an extension of their arm, which is why finding the right one is vitally important. Since turning professional, Ronnie's cue, like that of so many top pros, has been made by one man, John Paris. But just how is a snooker cue made? Ronnie went to find out. John. Hello, Ronnie. How are you doing? Nice to see you. You're right, mate. Yeah, good. I've come down here today. Obviously, you're the man to do the cues. You do all the cues for the players. I know how important it is for snooker players to get the right cue. Yeah. So today I've come down here. I want you to show me around. Show us how it's done from start to finish. And I'm sure everyone else will be interested in how it's done as well. Yeah, no problem. We can give you the tour. Take that back, through. yeah? Yeah, sure. Right, cool. Follow me. Cheers. All right, John. So, uh... Well, this is uh, how it starts off. Um, I, I go to wood yards that have got mountains of timber, spend all day selecting through, and mm. just come away with a, with a small pile. This, this, this is ash. We do maple as well. So, obviously, when you're pick choosing wood, there's obviously a lot of wood to choose from. How do you mm. know which is going to be something that's going to be what you're, gonna, what you're looking <laughs> for? I mean, cause to it's, me, that's just like a plank of wood. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, obviously, it's experience of picking it out, but you're looking for a straight grain, a nice clean piece of wood, no variation in colour. And it's just knowing what you're looking at when it's this stage that, that will make a make a good cue. OK, so now we've got this, the bit that you've the cut off from the yeah. plank. Yeah, from, from the planks we, we cut it into squares, which then gives you a better idea what the whole thing's going to look like. Yeah. Uh, and from this, I then, you know, choose the best end, so which will give us the best end for the, the tip end. So yeah. Obviously, that's where you're going to be the looking at the points. Bit, yeah. And from that, I decide where we're going to cut the cue out of this piece of wood. So it won't necessarily be the same off of both sides. I'll decide mm. which way we're going to run to, to give a, uh, a good look on the cue when it's finished. So from the square, we then take it to quite a large oversized taper and, and round it off, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of planed down by hand. And we keep turning that. You can actually see the grain coming through. Yeah. And as you can see, you know, at, at that stage, the, the points start to develop. Yeah. And you, you can actually see where you're going then. But uh, obviously, the smaller it gets, that will change. OK, so, so we've now got the, 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 the finished shaft yeah. into the, to the final taper. And from that, we do the hand splicing which um, involves planing the shaft down on four sides, two at a time, mm. and inlaying ebony or, or rosewood into that to, mm. so that you get the added weight to the cue, but mm. also the, the nice points shape of a, of a spliced butt and a, and a smoother feel for the, mm. for the grip as well. Once, once it's gone down on, uh, on, on two sides, it's then oh. planed again, okay. um, and uh, you, you put the other sides on. OK, so once, once all the ebony's glued on, it's then got to be taken down and, and, and rounded off. Um, and you, you see the distinctive points coming back mm. onto the cue then. So that's then planed down. So is everything done by hand? Is there any point Pretty that much. machines are kind well, of...? Well, we use machines to, to, to do some roughing out and to put mm. the joints in. Most, most of the lathes that you see are mainly for jointing. But a lot of the splicing is all done by hand. And, you, and as you do it, you know, you, you just keep checking to make sure that it's, it's, it's carrying on sort of straight and not, you're not taking it too much one way or, or the other. Eventually, from there, it oh, becomes okay. the, yeah. the normal snooker size. Mm. Obviously, some of the others have that same operation done again mm. with, with the decoration splicing. You, you probably recognise this yeah. design. This is the, uh, <laughs> the most... The most popular, famous design in the world because it, it, it looks the same as yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From finishing the bud off, we then cut, cut the cue off to length, whichever mm. length's been ordered, mm. uh, put a tenon on there, and then, then we fit the brass ferrule. Why oh. do people need ferrule? I mean, I remember in the old days, some people just used to stick their tip on the end of a bit of wood. A bit like splitting logs. I mean, when you think of the impact constantly hitting balls on there, it'd be quite easy for that to then sort of spread and open up. So the ferrule just protects the top of the cue. So, OK, once. once the cue's finally sanded and, it, and it's nice and smooth. Mm. Uh, we, we then apply a, a grain filler to that, which obviously makes it it's slightly smoother because it, it fills the grain in. Yeah. But it also enhances the, the colours out of the grain. So we, we, we put that on, 
leave it to set and then sand it off again. We then have to level the top of the ferrule off, which is important to get that mm. nice and flat, a good mm. glue and, and two perfect surfaces to go together. Mm. We always put an oversized tip on and then uh, we, we trim that down. Okay, so once that's... Um, that's been chopped down now, once so that's kind of trimmed in, flush. Uh, we, we get it to that. And then uh, with, with a file, we just start to give that uh, a rough dome. And uh, it's just t take the edges away and then gradually you work into a, a sort of a, a rocking motion from the centre to the outside so that you're, you're coming mm. across. And that takes quite a while to get that down, but eventually okay. yeah, you end up with something like this. It's a nice um, perfect dome there, yeah. Uh, and then we, we finish it off with a, with, a, with a tip shaper, a piece of sort of sandpaper in a, in a tip shaper. You know, from that, you get that nice and smooth around the edge. Nice dome. And, uh, Perfect. Ready to nice go. Tip, nice tip like that. World Championship. Good. Can you hear that? Yeah, could be. <laughs> I like that.